Folks, it's not every day you discover something new about a topic that you thought you knew mostly everything about, and that's an exciting day. And <laughs> today is that day for me. Um, I I think I know most of what there is to know about throttle calibration and Beale Heli and clean flight, but I learned something new. Uh, and I have to give credit to Boris, who is the one I saw raising the issue. And from some of the discussions I've had, I think I also have to give credit to uh, Quad McFly. And he actually, if I, my memory is correct, he credited RS2K, although I'm not sure. I, it's a long chain of credits of people who deserve credit for this. So kudos to everyone who discovered this before me. And uh, apologies to anyone who told me about it, and I blew them off, although I don't think that happened. But, so what is this? What is this? It is something new about how to calibrate your ESCs, and I almost hesitate to say that because there is so much misinformation and bad information out there about how to calibrate your ESCs that when I first heard about this, my thought was, oh, great, An another person is getting it wrong. Dang it, people. But that person was Boris, and Boris is usually right. So since it was Boris, I paid attention and listened, and I did my own testing, and it turns out he is right, and that's great. But let me say that if you don't feel confident that you understand how calibration works, my normal advice stands. Run throttle calibration using the motors tabs and then just leave it alone. Okay? That's good advice and it will not steer you too far wrong. But here is a way that you could squeeze a little more performance out. And I think you're going to want to stick around for this because it's pretty cool. Let's talk about... Clean Flight's uh, throttle output or motor output and BL Heli's throttle curve. Clean Flight outputs motor signals from min command to max throttle, which we'll say for this example are 1000 to 2000. You may have noticed that when you run motor calibration, BL Heli does not usually end up with 1000 to 2000. In fact, it usually ends up somewhere around 1025 and 1975 ish. And part of the reason for that is that BL Heli always adds 20 microseconds to either end of the throttle curve to create a dead zone, an intentional dead zone at the top and bottom. Now, the purpose for the dead zone at the bottom is, I think it's just to make sure that the motors completely turn off. In other words, if this is the zero point, let's not screw around. Let's have clean flight think this is the zero point and BL Heli think this is the zero point. So when clean flight means to turn off the motors, we're 100% guaranteed for sure that the motors do in fact turn off. And by the way, remember that we also have somewhere in here min throttle that makes sure that the motors never turn off when we don't intend them to, okay? And at the top of the throttle curve here, we have a similar dead zone. And I think the purpose of that is to make sure that clean flight is able to command 100% output from the motors. In other words, we want clean flight to be able to put the pedal all the way to the floor and just open the motors up wide up. And so if we want to just make sure that it not only goes to the top end, but it goes past the top end just to really 100% make sure that we get full output from the motors. But this dead zone at the top end causes a problem. And I'm going to tell you what that problem is. The problem is that the PID loop is expecting that the things it does make a difference in real life. And when the PID loop makes a change and that change has no effect, the PID loop amplifies the change that it's trying to make. The example I like to use for this is if you, uh, if, if the wife says to the husband, honey, what do you want for dinner? And the husband doesn't answer. She says, honey, what do you want for dinner? She shouts it louder. And she's gonna maybe shout it louder and louder until he finally answers her. So if the PID loop tries to make a change, for example, the PID loop causes the right front motor to spin faster and the copter does not respond to that, it's going to keep making the right front motor spin faster and faster and faster and faster until the copter finally responds or until the motor reaches max output, at which point the PID loop realizes that there's nothing more to ask for. Okay. So what this means is that when the PID loop puts a motor output into this dead zone, it's pretty much guaranteed that the motor output is going to continue to slide through this dead zone until it hits max throttle. And the reason being that the, the PID loop is saying, 
give me more output from this motor. The motor spins faster and faster and faster and faster. And now it, it will not spin any faster because it is already spinning as fast as it can possibly spin. But the PID algorithm doesn't know that the motor is already spinning as fast as it can possibly spin. So it continues to ask, spin faster, please spin faster. Why are you not doing anything? Oh, okay, now I'm at the max. I guess I can't, we're not gonna spin any faster. And BL Heli is like, yeah, duh, I know you can't spin any faster. I haven't been spinning any faster for 20 microseconds now. Now the same thing happens on the way down. Let's say the motor is at maximum and the PID algorithm starts reducing the motor output. Nothing happens. It reduces the output further. Nothing happens. It reduces the output further. Nothing happens. And now finally, that it's reducing the output, does the, the, the uh, ESC actually start reducing the output of the motor? So there's in this top end, in this bottom end dead zone, not, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, we shut the motor down, right? We just go from, from you know here all the way to zero and we're done. But at the top end, you might see this happen. If you peg the throttle all the way at max, you peg your throttle stick all the way up, you may see some oscillation in the motor output. And the reason for that is that the PID loop is constantly pushing the motor through this dead zone. Think of this dead zone like an oil slick on the road. As soon as you slide into the dead zone, you're going to slide all the way to the other end. And if you push off that wall and come back, you're going to slide out. You can get these top end oscillations in the motors. And it's not because your PID algorithm, you know, it's not because your P gain is too high, although reducing your P gain will reduce it somewhat but it's actually because there is this discontinuity between the top end of the ESC throttle curve and the top end of clean flight throttle curve. So what can you do about this? Well, you could calibrate, right? And then you could subtract 20 microseconds from your max throttle. You could just manually set your max throttle to 1980. That's certainly a thing you could do, but it's not quite that simple because this assumes that the oscillator of clean flight and the ESC are 100% in sync. So in fact, when you run the calibration, you're going to get 20 microseconds cut off the top, just right, right off the top, period. But you may also have a five microsecond difference in the timing circuit of clean flight and BL Heli. So this number may actually turn out to be 1975 on one ESC, and maybe it turns out to be 1960 on another ESC, and so on. And down at the bottom, this number may be 1024 on one ESC and 10. 28 on another ESC, and so on and so on, okay? So there's going to be a little bit of calibration-related difference as well. It's not as simple as just subtracting 20 microseconds. And there's another thing here that comes into play that you wouldn't notice unless you were doing tests of motors and ESCs on the bench. And that's why people like Quad McFly discovered this uh, first, as far as I know. And that is that the actual throttle curve in BL Heli has a flat spot at the top, which means that as that motor signal goes up, the motor actually reaches peak RPM before it reaches the PPM max value. And I actually have no idea why that is. And by the way, this is one of the things that people who fly KISS ESCs say they like better about KISS ESCs compared to BL Heli, is that it has a much more linear throttle curve without a flat spot at the top end. And actually, if you play with the dither setting in BL Heli, Higher dither settings reduce this flat spot at the top end. I don't know why, but a dither of 15 will have less flat spot and a dither of zero or none will have much more of a flat spot. Don't take this as to scale. I'm just, I'm just expressing concept here. Uh, so there's a flat spot here. And in my, I've done a little bit of testing and I also checked with uh, Quad McFly and he says that flat spot can be something like 30 to 40 microseconds, if my memory is correct. In my case, with my ESCs, it was about 30 microseconds of throttle. The effect of this is that you get high throttle oscillation. Uh, and it, you, bear in mind that you don't have to be at 100% throttle. If you take the roll stick and you slam the roll stick over to the side, the right motors can go to full even though your throttle stick is not at 100%. Anytime any motor goes to 100%, you'll get this oscillation. But the most likely time when that's going to happen is when your throttle stick is at full and you're flying, you know, doing a hard punch out or something. Okay, so how do you get rid of this oscillation? The way to get rid of this oscillation is to calibrate max throttle so that the ESC never enters this dead zone at the top 
of its curve. I don't know what I'm drawing here. This dead zone at the top of the curve, we need to figure out where that starts from the ESC's perspective and set the equivalent number in clean flight. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, now I'm going to calibrate the top end of the throttle curve on my copter. So just so you understand where we're coming from, I've got min command at 1,000 and max throttle at 2,000. And I have previously calibrated these ESCs. So the PPM endpoints for these ESCs are somewhere around uh, 1020 to 1980. That includes the 20 microseconds of dead band that BL Heli adds at the top and the bottom of the curve. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the actual max throttle value is that is the actual top of BL Heli's throttle curve. And then we're going to change max throttle in clean flight so that it never goes above that point. And here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to go to the motors tab. My props are off. And I'm also, just for good measure, I'm using a 3S battery. And it's actually at uh, it's actually at storage charge, so it's like 11.4 volts. And I've even got my current limiting bulb in here. And the main reason I'm doing this is I just don't I don't need to spin the motors at full throttle. All I need to know is where the top of the curve is. I don't actually need to run the motor at any particular speed. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Okay. Okay. Good. I'll move this out of the way so it doesn't get caught up in a motor. And now, I understand the risks, props are removed. I'm going to pick one motor, and I'm going to slide up. And now, I'm going to just press the down arrow and listen. There. There you go. So it's around 1942. It's around 1942. So I'm going to write that value down. Let me get a pen here. That was 1942. And I'm actually going to repeat this for all of them because they're not all calibrated exactly the same, again, because of the slight differences in their timing circuits. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all four of them. Nineteen forty seven, forty three, I think, sounded like about forty three, nineteen forty three. And 1940. Okay, so 1942, 47, 43, and 40. I'm going to pick the lowest of those values, and that's what I'm going to set my max throttle to. Now, it's really critical that you understand that you are not you are not going to recalibrate your ESCs after you make this change. If you do that, you'll just put the dead band back in. So you set your max throttle to 2,000, you run the calibration, then you figure out where the dead band ends, and you set your max throttle down to that value. And then if you rerun the calibration after that point, you'll be putting the dead band back in, which is not what you want to do. Okay, that's done. Now we'll take it out and fly, and we'll see how, uh, if, it's, if anything's gotten better. And we will see that in another video on another day. In the meantime, as always, happy flying.